Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, it never rains in the classical music biz. It pours. Here we have yet another recording of Court Vile's Second Symphony, hot on the heels of the Bis recording, which is actually a little bit, I think maybe a little bit older. No, it's not. Who knows? Anyway, that was conducted by H.K. Gruber and was an all vile disc, and it was quite marvelous. Um, and this one, which has just come out, features conductor Lahav Shani, and it's coupled with the Shostakovich Fifth Symphony, the Court File Symphony Number no. 2. It is um, with Shostakovich Fifth and the Rotterdam Philharmonic Orchestra. Now, the Shostakovich is a live recording. The vial seems not to have been. Um, at least that's what it sort of says in here. And it's interesting because, because this is recorded, it's under license. It's under license to something records limited, polyphone or parlophone or something like that. And I don't know, I find this very interesting. You know, people are doing their own productions now and licensing, to, licensing them to the labels, which have no longer been, you know, no longer function as, you know, A&R, that is artist and repertoire intelligent labels that are building catalogs. And no, 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 no. They're just conduits. They're distribution conduits. And they have conduited this. Now, this is, well, 60-40 because the length of the works is quite different. The 40% is the Vile Symphony Number no. 2, and it's excellent. And it's not surprising, really, because, you know, it, it's not the kind of work that requires a lot of interpretive thinking. It really, it really kind of plays itself. It's not emotionally all that, all that hot and heavy. It's a neoclassical, sardonic, witty, a little bit emotionally distant. You know, remember Bertolt Brecht and the Verfremdung's effect? You know, alienation. There's a little of that going on here. You're supposed to sit back and take it in. You're not supposed to sort of get hugely involved in it, except for the central movement, which is one of the most extraordinary slow movements, frankly, in the first half of the 20th century, I think. It's really kind of amazing. It sounds like absolutely nothing else. It's a combination sort of funeral march and something else. <laughs> what that else is, I have no idea. But it's a very fine performance. It's exciting. It's deft. It's, it's witty. It's sly. It's, it's, it's a, a work that really speaks to our contemporary sensibility, which is not so much of the hot and heavy romantic breed, unlike Shostakovich's fifth. Now, this performance of the Shostakovich fifth, which I, as I said, is live, has, well, one good thing going for it, which is the woodwind playing, particularly in the scherzo, where they're full of personality and they, they, really, they really come forward, so much so that it only highlights just how uninteresting the rest of it is. I mean, this is a performance which, if you went to it at your average subscription concert on your average night, you would go away satisfied for having heard a decent, but in no way distinctive, aside from the woodwinds in the scherzo, performance of the Shostakovich Fifth. I mean, the brass are not great. Um, the trumpets have a little coordination problem in the first movement development section. Um, the, the whole first movement is rather heavy-handed. It doesn't build to those gut-wrenching climaxes. The, 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 you know, the slow movement, the largo, it's very pretty. It's very pretty, but is it gut-wrenching? Does it, does it, you know, slash and burn? Does it make you want to scream in despair? Does it, does the intensity rise to an unbearable paroxysm of fury? Well, no, it doesn't. The finale is intelligent. It's well-paced. Uh, the ending is one of the slower versions of it. But if you're going to do the slower one, you really have to make it sound painful like Kurt Sanderling does, for example. This is just, like I said, average playing. Work a day. That's the word for it. Now, I, I'm sure, you know, Shahani, Shahani here is a very talented, Shani, pardon me, not Shani, it's Lahav Shani. There we go. I mean, he's a talented guy. Um, I'm sure he has ideas about the music. I, I can imagine under either studio conditions or with a better orchestra, uh, this would have made a more positive impression, but they don't care. You know, they set up the microphones and here it is. It's a performance that had no reason to exist, to be preserved. There's nothing to preserve. 
There are so many fine recordings of the Shostakovich V. I mentioned Sandling, there's Rostropovich, there's the first Bernstein, there's Andre Previn with the LSO. I mean, there, there's Bernard Heitink in the Kitsarek. I mean, they're wonderful Shostakovich Fifth. I did a whole talk about them. You can go have a look at the Shostakovich Fifth repertoire chat. And so if you're going to be competing with those, you damn well better make sure that you are competing with those. This doesn't. It doesn't at all. So I don't know what anyone wants with this. I like the programming concept because the two works are so different aesthetically, other than that ironic wit part, which they both share. But otherwise, they're expressively, they couldn't be, they couldn't be more different, but they were written about the same time. You know, we're talking about 1930s, middle 1930s. So it's, it's really fascinating to have them both together. But on the other hand, um, they both should be equally great, and they're not. And that's the bottom line. So you can listen to the court vial, but if you have the bis, you don't need this. Um, and, and by the way, the vial is much better recorded as the Shostakovich as well. The sonics are also nothing special. So that's the bottom line here. Nothing special. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.